This is a CPU Intel is trying to suppress, because like a king's illegitimate love child, Intel doesn't seem to acknowledge that this CPU even exists. Let me explain. This is the Intel 12490F, and I'm sure many of you PC hardware enthusiasts just got pretty confused, and there's a good reason why. The 12490F likely hasn't been mentioned by any PC hardware channel you watch, nor can you likely buy it from any traditional retailer in your region. And on top of that, the most concerning thing, Intel's art product database where they list the specs of every single product they manufacture doesn't even have this CPU listed. But it does smell like an Intel chip, and it tastes like an Intel chip too. Blueberry? So, what gives? Well, the way that I see it is there's only two logical conclusions here. Either Intel doesn't want you to know about this CPU, or I just got scammed out of $230. So which one is it? How did I get this guy? And if it is a real Intel CPU, maybe we can find out why Intel doesn't want you to know about it by comparing it to their own 12400 budget king it's obviously trying to beat. And by the end of this video, we're going to answer the question, what does Intel have to hide? Let's find out. So I have a question. Are you an avid PC enthusiast stuck with that ugly ass Windows watermark ruining your gaming and streaming experience? Well, I have great news for you. WhoKeys is a software licensing website dedicated to getting you affordable keys. And the best part is you can get rid of that watermark in a matter of minutes. All you need to do is head down to the video description, click the sponsor link and enjoy an additional 25% off using my coupon code TL20. With PayPal checkout and quick key delivery, all you need to do is hit the Windows key, type activate and paste your key right here to become fully activated. It really is that simple and that cheap. So head down to the video description if that sounds right for you. And thank you Hookies for sponsoring this video. So before we see if I got scammed, we need to talk about how getting this CPU was even possible, which if you haven't guessed by the packaging, yes, random Chinese sellers are involved. I stumbled upon this eBay listing while trying to find a cheap i5-12400 for a different project. And when I saw it, my scam sensors started tingling. Tingling harder than Spider-Man at a Thanksgiving parade. You know the one, the type of tingle you can feel in your stomach. Don't be rude. It honestly wasn't the fact that this CPU was coming from China, but the fact that I had never ever heard of it. And as you can imagine, I keep pretty in tune with these kinds of things. So into another research rabbit hole I go. There's not a lot of information about the 12490F, but the first place that I would typically go for any product is the company's website. Seems like a pretty obvious place. And as Intel do a fantastic job of disclosing the specs for their product over at Arc, if it's made by Intel, it should obviously be there, right? No, no it isn't. And that's a huge red flag. So why did I take a chance on this guy knowing that? Well, researching a little bit further, we can see articles from Tom's Hardware, WCCF Tech, and Tech Power Up, reputable publications. Which, okay, this is starting to make a bit more sense now. The reason this CPU has had very little coverage is that it seems to be a China-only variant of Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs. And interestingly, this isn't even the first CPU that Intel has released only in China. The dual-core E6500K seems to be the first, and the most recent, other than this guy, of course, looks to be the i3-8121U. But both of those are listed on ARC. So why not this? And what even are you? Let's stick in a test bench and see if we can answer those questions. For testing, I've gone as high-end as I can to really try and see the differences between the 12400 and the 12490F, if we get that far. So DDR5 Fury Beast from Kingston, an overclocking champion, plus Gary the Gaming 3080 Founders Edition from this video. We're also going to be calling the chips using the Enemax Ligmax 3. Ligmax is a strangely seductive name. Hey Enemax, I don't think that sounds how you think it sounds. Actually, scrap that. No one else is going to be licking this CPU. We're going to be using the king of air cooling, the Notua NHD15. And all of this is being installed into the ASRock Z690 Tai Chi Razor Edition, which is significantly more high-end than we need for these guys. But now that we have that all set up, the two things that I want to answer is, does my rando eBay Chinese CPU even function? And if it does, how does it compare to the 12400 and is it even worth it? Let's find out. Okay, so now that we have the test bench set up, it's time to figure out if this CPU even works or if I've just been scammed out of my money. Wish me luck and let's see if this boots. Looking normal so far, fingers crossed. Oh, we have RGB, which is a good sign and we have post. That's fantastic news. This is really good. So if it gets to post, we know that it's an actual CPU that functions and is compatible with this motherboard. 
and now we're in Windows. So these are all really good signs. And the next thing that we need to do is validate that it's the CPU that it actually says it is. And the way to do that, the best way is probably going to be CPU Z. And there we go. Intel 12490F, that's a good sign. Alder Lake 6 cores, which are all performance cores. 12 threads, yep. Oh. Now that's interesting. We're going to cover why this is important in a bit, but just take a look at that level three cache down there. If I recall correctly, the 12400 only has 18 megabytes of cache, which is 20% lower than this. So I wonder how that might affect the results. But we also have a 500 megahertz increase on the base clock and 200 megahertz increase to the boost, which should definitely help with performance. So at least it works, which is good. I mean, my heart's stopped beating a little bit harder right now, but now is a really good time to figure out how it performs performs to the Intel 12400. So what we're going to do is run a few tests and a few benchmarks and figure out how it performs. So let's do that. So before we discuss why this CPU exists and how it actually might be more similar to Intel's current flagship, let's find out if the 12490F can dethrone the budget king by getting into the most important part of this video. We're going to be stress testing, performance benchmarking and comparing gaming results to see if the 12490F is worth it over the 12400 or if Intel really do have something to hide. Starting out with OCCT. The 12400 has an idle temp of 30 degrees C before being hit with an all core load, driving the temperature up to 59 for the hottest average and 61 for the hottest single core. Throughout the duration of our tests, the core clocks locked on to four gigahertz, which is an impressive 1.5 gigahertz above the base clock. A great result. Single core Cinebench sees the most active core temporarily peak up to its 4.4 gigahertz boost clock, but although it does this frequently, realistically, it spends more time at four gigahertz, netting a respectable 1,543 points. But when it comes to multi-core, we do drop back down to the four gigahertz that we saw during the OCCT stress test, but that still gets us a great score of 12,147. It's no wonder why this CPU is so well acclaimed. It really is a great chip. But before we jump into the gaming comparison, let's Let's find out if the 12490F can beat those numbers. Well, mostly, yes. In our stress test, the 12490F also locks onto 4 GHz for the duration of our run, but where we do see a difference is in the temperatures. Not only is it 2 degrees lower at idle, but we're looking at the hottest single core maxing out at 58 degrees, and the hottest average being 53. That's 3 and 6 degrees lower, respectively, at the same clock speed. And I think I know why that is, which we will cover in a bit, but not bad at all, especially with a controlled room temp of 26 degrees. But the differences don't stop there. In single core Cinebench, we see the 12490F regularly hit its boost of 4.6, which leads to a result of 1,749. That's a staggering 13% over the 12400 at three degrees lower on its hottest core. However, a multi-core score does tighten up the differences between them. Although the 12490F spends more time at the four gigahertz max, it's still peaking at the same clock speed as the 12400. Therefore, we only see an increase of just under 2%, with a score of 12,382, which gives us insight into where this CPU might be a great option. We're not fully maxed out on all cores, which is where gaming comes into play. At least, that's what you would think. Starting out with the Unigen Heaven, the 12490F gets barely over 1.5% more for the average frame rate. But as both CPUs were pretty much locked onto 4 GHz, it's basically a tie with run-to-run -run variants, and the CSGO benchmark tells a similar story, at just over a single frame difference in performance. However, Shadow of the Tomb Raider surprisingly sees the 12490F get narrowly beaten by the 12400 by just under 1%, while Halo Infinite sees a 1.3% gain. And honestly, I was expecting more from you, given that you're essentially a flagship CPU. So let's talk about what I mean by that and why this CPU even exists. To understand how this processor came to be, we first need to take a look at the most logical place to investigate. It's bottom. The arse end of a CPU is actually more telling than you think, because the SMDs that you see right here are unique to a specific core arrangement inside the CPU. And when we compare the 12490F to the 12400, you can see that something about them is fundamentally different. And the funny thing is, when we compare it to the 12900K, a significantly more powerful CPU with both performance and efficiency cores, we can see that they are far more similar in design to each other than either one of them are to the 12400. But why might that be? And what purpose does it serve? Well, the truth is with semiconductor manufacturing, sometimes things don't go to plan. And what was intended to be a flagship CPU may have minor deficiencies in the cores that prevent it from being the high-end wallet wrecker it was designed to be. But what do you do at that point? If you're Intel, do you just chuck it and count your losses? No. That's money. You disable those cores and either sell it as a lower tier product or as a different product entirely. 
And that looks to be how this guy was born. There are enough defective high-end CPUs for this to become a separate product in itself, apparently with a focus on Chinese internet cafes. But a 13% improvement on single core workloads and negligible improvements for everything else, I'd really love to know how much those cafes were spending on these CPUs, compared to a 12400. Because in raw performance, it seems like pretty poor value at the $30 markup I bought it for. And it's also worth bearing in mind that unlike the 12400, the 12490F doesn't come with a stock cooler included, though it does run at a lower temperature which may be because of the lack of iGPU core arrangement or both. So the question that I have is, does the fact that it's an extremely unique product with better thermal performance contribute to its value? Because value is one of those things that isn't as obvious as you think. As we discussed in this video, where we cover graphics card market prices and how a $20 screwdriver priced at $15,000 may be amazing value. So check that out by clicking here. And remember guys, share, like, subscribe, they are always appreciated. And I hope you have an amazing day.